just like hey folks we are live yeah you hear the song come on we all know this song from butch cassidy and the sundance kid that's what we've been having it's raining that's all we get is rain i know there's some parts of the country who are going through a uh, trout Hey, Hawaii has a volcano, so you know what? Give me the rain. Everybody. Won't defeat me. It won't be long till there's happiness steps up to greet me. Raindrops keep falling on my head But that doesn't mean my eyes will soon be turning red Crying it's not for me Cause I never look without the rain like a blade Because I'm free Nothing's worrying me It won't be long till happiness steps up to greet me. Raindrops keep falling on my head, but that doesn't mean my eyes will soon be turning red. Crying's not for me, cause I'm never gonna stop the rain by complaining. Because I'm free Nothing's worrying me I was too fast About to play with my ass. Let's go back. I should have did that earlier. That'd be hilarious. Check this out. I'm gonna play the trumpet with my ass. Just for you people. Here we go. Folks, folks, I'm a man of many talents. You have no idea. No score. Yankees won so far. First game in a doubleheader. By the way, folks, we're not on YouTube. I have no idea. Because uh, every time I go live on any of the three social media platforms, there's always one of them that's got to be uh, a bitch. So hopefully, like, that's why I say you got to cross-pollinate. Hopefully the people on YouTube realize and they'll go to Facebook or Instagram and vice versa. That's called the cross-pollination of social media platforms. All right. Wow, I haven't seen you guys in a while. I miss you guys. But I'm a busy man. Um, we'll be back tomorrow night. And tomorrow night I'll let you know about the following night. We'll take it a day at a time. One day at a time. Because things are crazy. It's a good crazy. It's a good crazy. It's a very, very good crazy. Crazy. Um. So the last time I was on, if I remember correctly, was Wednesday night, May 30th. 
because the following day I had a private gig. I did a corporate gig in Toronto for the uh, mall pack guys, Manny and his brother. Amazing. This, this beautiful family started this plastic, the shrink wrap that goes around. When you ever see the warehouse, when I got the pr boxes on a pallet and the pallet, you know, goes around and the shrink wrap, these guys make the shrink wrap. It's like the biggest in Canada, one of the biggest in the whole, uh, are we the Northern Hemisphere? Yeah, I don't know. I was, I was never good in geometry. Um, they treated me like a king. I was in and out one day, bada bing, bada boom, home in my own bed at night. It was great. So that went great. And if you're watching anybody from uh, Malpac and, and Manny and Ricardo, the guy who set it all up, thank you. I had a ball, you guys. Let me tell you something. Uh, Italian Canadians are, are a different breed. Um, they say, uh, they, you know, in Canada, they end with A, and Italian Canadians, oh, A. Hey. Right? All right. All right. Uh, so what's coming up? So tell us, Vic, where are you going to be next? This Thursday through Saturday, I'm at Rockwell's. One show each night. Rockwell's is in Pelham, New York, which is between Yonkers and uh, West... It's part, I don't know if it's part of Westchester, but it's a beautiful town. They do a great job. I think there's only a few tickets left for the Thursday night show. I think Friday, Saturday sold out. The food there is amazing. Steve, the owner, is the, him and his son, the salt of the earth. Uh, so that's that. All right? Anything else, go to my website, vigdebatetto.net. Or go to my fan page. Or go to my updated flyer on my fan page. I also have an updated banner on my fan page. Worst comes to worst, go to Google, type in Vic D. Everything shows up. And that's that. Now, this past Saturday night, I want to thank all my Philly, my Pennsylvania, there's even people from Delaware, uh, South Philly, and uh, South Jersey. They sold out the show for me this past Saturday night at the Sugar House Casino. What an amazing bunch of people. It's all my, I, I posted two videos from that, that night. Check those out. Just amazing people at the meet and greets. I apologize. Folks, you got to understand, I meet so many people at these meet and greets. I get so many messages on here, there, everywhere, here, there, and everywhere. You know, Paul wrote that song when he was waiting for John Lennon. He was sitting in the room waiting for Lennon to come out. I don't know. Amazing. Just amazing. Um, so please, forgive me. I had two very special people. Uh, this was mailed to me. Um, so I used to live in Florida. I lived in Florida between 1996 and 2000. And I lived on the borderline of Pasco and Hernando County, which is on the West Coast, an hour north of Tampa, a little town called Spring Hill. And I made friends down there, and I got a gift from uh, the Pasco County Sheriff. There you go. I was on the borderline of Pasco and Hernando, but I was, like, the next street over was was uh, Hernando. I lived in Pasco. God bless all law enforcement. And this was given to me at the meet and greet in uh, Philadelphia. God bless all law enforcement. This is Delaware police. This is Pasco County, Florida. God bless you all, law enforcement, EMS, first responders, Port Authority, uh, our military, of course, um, teachers, nurses, doctors, lions and tigers and bears. Oh, my. Lions and tigers and bears. Oh, my. Okay. Oh, those of you who live in Spring Hill, I'm going to be in Tampa, which isn't far from Spring Hill. I'm not going to get any closer to Route 19. Believe me, I know it well. Uh, that's, uh, just call Side Splitters. They'll give you all the info. Side Splitters in Tampa. I'm there for a whole weekend. So I'm looking forward to seeing my, uh, Pasco County, Hernando County fans. I do a meet and greet. Yes, there's a meet and greet at Side Splitters. I love it because it's outdoors. It's got that Florida, I love the heat. I got, I need heat. You know, with all this rain and shit, the piss, I, I know it's not just Jersey. It's like, like the whole Northeast. I feel like we've been under a blanket. I need one of those. You ever see a, the, a, a reptile tank where a lizard sits on one of those heated rocks? That's what I need, a fucking heated rock. I just, I'm tired of this fucking, it, it's June. It's June. Holy shit. All right. Here's the deal, Lucille. Thank you, Philly. 
South Jersey, South Philly, and Delaware. It was an incredible night. Marion Groden, who was Charles Groden's daughter, by the way, she knocked it out of the park. She's fearless. You ever get a chance? Check out Marion Groden. Uh, all right. I'd like to talk to you guys all night, but this show isn't about me. It's about you. Once again, we are not live on YouTube. I think uh, YouTube is, uh, is down tonight. So maybe I'll, I'll call up YouTube and try to cheer him up if he's down. <laughs> okay. First caller of the night. Folks. Uh, if you inboxed me your name and number these past couple of days, it's been crazy. I, I, I just, I jot them down as I get them. I, I, I apologize. I'm trying my best here. I know people are waiting for months. What do you want from me? Who else does this? Who else does this? Come on, folks. Let's forget your troubles. Come on, get happy. All right? Life's too short. Let's overtake the miserables out there. Okay? Drake uh, is a vet who served in Iraq and Afghanistan. I called him twice, and he, he texted me, uh, inbox me, please, of course I'm going to call you back. You kidding me? Don't even have to explain yourself. You got cop blanche, my friend. 413. Oh, what happened? Jesus Christ. 413. Draco! That's his name, Draco. Not Drago, Draco. Draco! Ayo, hey, agent, please. I never stop asking you to be a man. No, oh, I fucked it up. Well, then again, in today's world, right? So please, stop asking me to be a woman. What? 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 <laughs> Still no score in Comerica Park in Detroit. Yankees and Red Sox still got the best two records in baseball. It's going to be an interesting year going down to the wire. All right, Drake. Here we go. Let's try it again. 413. This is it. Hope he answers. Drake's Coffee Cakes. Please answer, Drake. Come on, Drake. Hey, how are you? Beautiful. Thank you, Drake. Thank you. Hey, sorry about the other night. I missed your phone call. It was just a little bit of hectic going Drake, on over here. Drake, you so. do not need to apologize to anybody in this country. Thank you for your service, my friend. Hey, no worries, my friend. Hey, by the way, I wanted to fill you in what I did for a job when I was in the military. I, I love... From 2002 to 2007. Me and my fans would love to hear it, Drake. All right, so I, I served 2002 to 2007. My job description, I was a mortician in the Army. So basically what I did was uh, I brought our guys home for proper burial. I went out on the battlefield and crossfire, all sorts of stuff. I picked them up off the battlefield. I bring them to a thing called the Theater Mortuary Evacuation Point, wow. which I ran. And uh, a couple of my other NCOs ran, and we uh, we would get them home on uh, map flights home, and they would bring them to Dover. De well, excuse me, let me back that up. They'd bring them to Germany first. Uh, they would process the, the bodies of our fallen comrades there. From Germany, they would ship them over to Dover, Delaware. Uh, when they reached Dover, Delaware, they would process them for their final times, find out where their families were, and then they would ship the bodies home to their state or wherever the, uh, wherever the funeral home would be. Um, I've been overseas three times. I did two uh, two Iraqs. I was in Iraq in 03 when they first, first called the war, declared war. Um, my actual orders, you'll get a kick out of this. My actual orders originally stated Operation Iraq, Iraqi Liberation before they changed it to Operation Iraqi Freedom. Holy Christ. Yep, and then... Uh, from 03, I got back. I was in. I was stationed in Fort Lee, Virginia. I went. I went uh, back for about a month. 
A month later, they sent me out to Kandahar, Afghanistan. I stayed there for 18 months. I uh, processed bodies out there, and uh, we got a body in that you probably may know. I'm not 100% sure, but we got a body in that was actually Rosie Khan. It used to be uh, Osama Bin Laden's chemical guy over there. We had processed his body. It was pretty interesting. I, I am then, uh, I'm speechless here. I that's <laughs> that's got to be like Jesus. That's an I've never been told what you just told me. I'm I'm floored. That is, how do you oh, yeah. how do you like keep up? Like, do you ever get depressed? I, Jesus, that's. I'll be very honest with you. I do suffer from time to time from uh, from nightmares and stuff. And then uh, to share the rest of what's going on with me, I uh, I went 18 months over there, came back. I got stationed in Germany, and I was in Germany for uh, two weeks before we got deployed back out to Iraq. And uh, while out in Iraq, three days before Thanksgiving in 2005, my uh, my convoy got hit by a roadside bomb. Um, unfortunately, I hate to say it, but I lost four of my guys. Jesus Christ! And um, and um, I'm I'm here as as their their uh, legacy to be able to speak about their legacy of their lives. Um, for myself, I was in a coma for a month and a half in Monstel Regional Hospital in Germany. And then they sent me back to my duty station, and then they, uh, we, we came to a point where it was uh, decision time if I was going to stay and be a paper pusher or if I just wanted to get out. And at that time, I was in so much pain. I just I left. I'm like, guys, I can't, you know, I can't do it no more. So I don't want to sound like a, a guy who just quits on anything, but it was just a guy so who just a, a guy who just quits on a thing, and you have. I, I don't think I could go through what you went through. God bless you for what. Thank you, thank you for what you did. Thank you, and my. You got to see the comments. My fans love you. That's that's awesome, Drake. Wow. Yeah, so I kind of wanted to share that with you. I've been meaning to to talk to you in a while. Hey, I got a question for you too. I'm sorry I missed you at the hooky lao and the, before they closed. I got uh, I got overwhelmed with some stuff. Drake, where are you? You're in, are you in Connecticut or Massachusetts? I'm in Massachusetts. I, I, I don't care if anybody knows where I'm at, but I'll say it straight out. I'm in Sturbridge, Massachusetts. Where is that? Is that near Boston or the other the other way? Um, that's heading out towards like uh, heading towards Central Mass, like Worcester, Greater Worcester County area. Okay, I would love for you to come to one of my one of my shows. I'd love to meet you. I, I would be honored to meet you one of these days. I really would. Well, I'm coming to Boston, the Chevalier, well, actually Medford, which is like two minutes past Boston. Okay. I'll, uh, when am I there? I'll have to look, I think I'll have I... to look on your page here and uh, figure out what, what the dates are and see if I have it open. Maybe me and the wife can pop up and I can get a babysitter for the kids. Hold on. I will tell you right now. Hold on. Just bear with me. Yeah, no problem. You know, it's it's still... I'm still absorbing what you just told me, and and I and I thought I had a bad day. It's just amazing. You, you you're a hero. You're an American hero, my friend. Not not these no talents that get praised and glorified for being degenerates. It's just disgusting what's going on. Yeah, the one the one thing that bothers me the most, Vic, is when I'm out in public. I don't I don't portray anybody or tell anybody that I'm a veteran and the reason why is because I, I feel like I did my job I didn't go out there for fame or anything but what really gets me the most and I'm going to be very honest with you is people who uh, get in these fake military uniforms go around and try to collect things saying they're a veteran when uh, they're not that's oh to my me, god it's a smack in the face smack in the face how about a, how about a, a golf club in the forehead Pretty much, it's like it's like a kick in the nuts. Damn, you know, that's why guys like you give me faith again in humanity. Seriously, you know, Memorial Day weekend that must have been pretty emotional for you, right? That was very emotional because not only did I have to. Um to relive my guys that I have lost, but also I am very good friends with a family, the Burgess family out of Texas, that lost their son on my birthday, which is coming up uh, this Thursday. 
I'll be 38 this Thursday. You're but, uh, 38? I will be. Jeez. So, so how old were you when, when you did all this? I joined the military back, uh, I actually, this is going to sound really crazy to you, but I'm going to share it with everybody. I want everybody to know this. I signed my paperwork two days before 9-11 happened. I signed at the uh, MEP Center out there in uh, Springfield. I went down, I did my physical test, I raised my hand, took the oath. Two days later, I was stationed up at Fort Devens, Mass., not in the military, but I was at the Job Corps Center up there finishing up my GED and everything that I needed to complete to go into the military. And I watched the towers get hit. First thought in my head was, am I really ready for this? <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you. I said, am I really ready for this? Wow. My, sec my second thought in my head was, I better be ready for this. Wow. So now, so I ended. Are you a mortician? Like, what do you do now? Are you still a mortician in, in America? Uh, not currently. Right now, they have me. Um, they have me unemployable as a hundred percent combat uh, disabled combat veteran um, because of my my issues that I deal with with uh, post traumatic stress disorder. I also have a thing called a traumatic brain injury from when I came down on my head. Uh, when I was in Iraq, I bounced across the ground. They, um, the only thing that saved my life, actually, was me not combat locking my home V door. If I had combat locked my home V door, I wouldn't be here today talking. I'd be burnt to death. Because uh, the, the blast, when they hit us, it, it hit us so hard, the force of the impact blew the door off and blew me out the door. And... Um, I have a friend of mine that lives down in Willamanta, Connecticut, that was a sergeant who came out there and pulled me off the battlefield and saved my life. And his, I'll share his name with anybody who wants to look him up. His name is Brehan Brady. You bring up any name you want, Drake. Definitely. It's just... Wow. I, wow. I, I don't know. Jesus Christ. I'm numb. I'm numb. You got me. This this call really uh God bless you. Thank you, sir. Uh, hey, no problem, sir. Are, no they problem, sir. Are they taking care of you? Are they taking care of you at least? They they are. They got me at a hundred percent uh disability. I'm 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 pretty well taken care Good. of right now through the through the veteran system. You well you should be. That'd be disgusting if you weren't. You know, I, I talked to a few guys, uh this guy Greg in Michigan. You know, it's it's really was sad. That the, was that the guy uh the guy you were talking to last week or the guy that is a amputee, I think? Yes, yes. Yeah. I, I was listening to his conversation and uh Greg, if you're listening, man, me and you need to link up sometime and have a conversation. Beautiful. You're, you're, you're uh, a true, uh, true hero as well. There's a lot of guys like like Greg out there. That that's why. If do you watch this on uh on my fan page? I do. I watch it via uh, social media or on Facebook. I'm I'm constantly watching when I can. Some days get a little hectic, and some days I get tired and go to sleep kind of early. But for the most part, I've been watching all the videos. And uh, all the little vignettes you do and everything. No, no, and all not, I can do is, is, not, is laugh because it picks me up. Um, no, not not only for that, because the comments. If you read some of the comments, you could get, really get in touch with a lot of guys like you. And you, they, they'll answer but, you. My fans are great. They'll, they'll help each other out. Nice. But I'm definitely want to... Getting off... I'm sorry. I'm going to be at the Chevalier Theater... In Medford, I'm going to get you and your wife or your girlfriend or your kumara. I'm going to get you guys comps. That would, that would be cool. You know what a kumara Are you Italian? You know what a kumara is, don't you? Of course I do. Uh, my, my family on my mother, I mean, my father's side is French Canadian and Italian, and you're going to laugh. The other side of my mother's side is Iberian and Native American, so I got the... I, I got a, a war going on, French and Indian war with the Iberian and Native American and, and Italian. Holy shit! It's crazy. That that's a sitcom right there. Yes, it is. January eleventh. It's a Friday night. January eleventh. January eleventh. Wow, I got plenty of time to figure that out. 
I'm going to write that down. On write it down. Here. You talk to your, your guest and you let me know. And, and inbox me again. And I'll get you two comps. No problem. We will take care of that. And I'll make sure to get a baby. I just, I just got to shake your hand and hug you and say thank you. I got to meet you. And I want a picture with you. Roger that. We will definitely make that happen, Vic. I appreciate that very much. So I got plenty of time to get a babysitter and all that stuff. Yeah. Hey, another thing I wanted to share with you guys, too, is uh, when I was in the VA hospital, I, I've been I've been truly blessed. I believe it. I've been blessed by God himself. And the reason why is I got two kids. I got a seven-year-old and I got a four-year-old. The doctors told me after my accident I would never have a kid ever in my life. Wow, this is a great story. This you your your story should be a movie. It's just incredible. Oh, oh sorry about that. Go ahead. A, mort a mortician for the army. You brought guys back here. You survived an explosion because the guy held the door. You had to. Uh, it's just. Uh, I wish. I wish I had fuck you money, man. I'd, I'd, I'd make a move. I'd play you, and you'd be my advisor. Definitely. I would, I would definitely do that, too. That, that would be something. Um, one thing that I am thinking about doing down the road here is that I've been kind of off and on jotting, like, little things here and there about, you know, things I can remember, you know, when, when the memories do come back. I want, to, uh, I want to put a book together that people can actually read. And actually see, you know, what the true life of being a mortician and being in the military really is. And I want to portray it in a way that is in the purest, realest form and not some type of, you know, make-believe fairy tale story that some, some people get, you know. Some people think that when we join the military, everything is like sugar-coated, like fairy tale endings and stuff. And it's really not anything like that at all. It's, you know, uh, it's definitely, it's definitely a different lifestyle. Absolutely, and I also take my hat off to parents who have kids in the military. My my kids are living in Scotland for a year because they they love it there. I can't imagine parents that have kids. You know, are your parents still alive? Yeah, my mother and father are still alive. We we talk from time to time. Um, my I I don't want to put out too much about something. I'll share it in the inbox, but my, my, my family was kind of there, but not not there as a kid. Um, I'll get more into it later on with you. I'll, I'll inbox you about it so you so I can share that with you. But, uh, yeah, they still, you know, from time to time, will give me a call and see how I'm doing. Absolutely. You're going to be a regular on this show. You there? And I'm still here. Yeah. I appreciate that. I'm just kind of like, I'm, I'm set back and thinking, <laughs> you know, about, about, you know, some stuff that we were just discussing about what happened out there. You got to, you got to write a book. That's a no brainer. You got to write a book. Oh, definitely. I, I definitely want to. I mean, <clears throat> excuse me. See, I'm, now I'm I reading. Definitely, definitely want to sit down and do that. I'm reading some of the comments. How great are my fans? Is I didn't get his name. If you go back to my fan, you know, when you watch this later, some gentleman wanted to know if you need a car service to get to uh, Medford. These are the kind of fans I have. They're amazing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be very honest with you. For me, I can't drive Boston well from where I'm at because I, I don't do well in, in the cities for some reason. I just I can't handle the traffic. I get totally understandable. Uh, you don't even need to explain, Drake. Please. I'm trying oh, to think. Sir. Hartford would be better for you, right? Hartford, Connecticut. Hartford, Connecticut. Yeah, I could take. Uh, I could take Interstate 84. Cause and ride Interstate 84 down into Hartford. Because right now I got nothing in, in Hartford, but my, you know, once I do, you'll be the first one to know. Okay. It's a, it's a shame. Hookie Lao closed. I love that place. Yeah. I was, I was just going to ask you, what do you think about that? I, I'm kind of shocked that they closed kind of suddenly like they did. Me too. You know, I'm not even from there, and I, I, could, I could feel that place was like a, a, a legend for the locals, you know? Oh, it always has been. I mean, there's it's been so many different comedy acts. My, my uncle was telling me that I think, I think it was there that he actually got to see George Carlin play. 
Oh, that Colin's my favorite. He's my idol. Yeah. You need to laugh. It's good. It's good for the soul. You know. Yes, it is. Well, listen, Drake. This has been. I gotta say, this is one of the best calls I've ever had. Thank you for picking up, and thank you for sharing with us, and thank you for your service, and God bless you. Oh, no worries. Hey, hey, thank you, Vic, for giving me a, a phone call back. I mean, like I said, I'm sorry I was kind of stuck in please, <laughs> please. stuff, but... Yeah, what did you say? You was you were knee-deep in transmission fluid? Yes, sir. <laughs> One of my motorcycles uh, started acting up. Um, I started it up in the garage, and some things were going on with it, and I kept looking. I kept seeing where the transmission is and fluid leaking and i'm like what's going on with this thing so i ended up i ended up taking it apart a little bit looking in there finding out and got it back together it's uh <laughs> i hope it stays together now what do you you not have to leak again you like motorcycles huh i do you ever go to sturgis that big thing in sturgis i've never been to sturgis but i've been up to uh I've been up to Laconia for Bike Week, which is coming up here in a couple of weeks, actually. Where, where is Laconia? Uh, New Hampshire. Oh, okay. It's um, it's the old the old Where's Beach, New Hampshire. They have a really good Bike Week up there, and I've also when I came out of the military for a little bit, I lived in South Carolina, and I got to see the Bike Week in Myrtle Beach. Nice, Drake. That's, I'm... Uh, that's a that's a crazy festivity. I actually met the Tuttles from Orange County Chocolates down there. And a funny, funny little story is I didn't meet them, like, you know, fan-wise. I was walking down the beach in Myrtle Beach, and uh, Tuttle Sr. was walking his dog. And I happened to pass him. I had just came out of work at Walmart, and I was walking down there just to collect my thoughts. And um, I saw him, and I'm like, hey, how you doing? And he's like, all right. And he was he was talking to me, and uh, we got into a conversation for a little bit, and then he he turned around and told me, you know what? How come you not tell me you're you're my biggest fan? I said, well, Paul, you're walking your dog down here. I don't want to be rude or anything, or you know, or or bother you during your time frame. He said, I respect that to me, and I was like, that means a lot. Yeah, you know, I got to see an unveiling of a bike that they did down there at uh. One of the buildings down there. I'm trying to remember the name of it right now. It's over at Broadway at the beach down there. Oh, I'm coming uh, to the casino. I'm coming to the casino. The, uh, what's the, the Hampton Casino right on the beach? In New Hampshire. Oh, the, the ballroom. What the hell's the name of it? Uh, Is August it the Hampton, uh, Hampton Beach uh, Ballroom? Yes, August 17th. It's a Friday. August seventeenth. I, I know what that is too. Um, what do you think? By, uh, Can you make that one? <laughs> I might be able to. Well, let me know. You let me know, and I'll hook it up. I want to. I want to have a shot. I want to have a shot and a beer with you. You there? Yeah, I'm just. Uh, yeah, I'm still here. Don't mind me. I'm just looking at the uh, calendar. August seventeenth is on a Friday. Right. That would. I think we could make that happen, actually. Ooh, that'd be wonderful. Well, just think about it. Talk to your wife or whoever, and let, or your guest, and let me know. All right? Yeah, definitely. I'm going to circle it right now. The, Ham the Hampton it. Beach Casino. It's right on the on the water. Hampton Beach. August, what did I say? August 17th. I will. I don't do shout outs, but I will give you the biggest shout out you ever got in your life from the stage. Nice. I'm going to. Uh, I'm going to have to go on there and for the for August seventeenth. I'm going to have to pick up some tickets. Correct. No, I'm going to take care of you. you yeah, you go to Will Call. There'll be two k tickets. Don't give me your last name here. I don't want your last name out there. You inbox me your full name so I can put you on will call. Hey, definitely will do. Uh, you you have any means of getting there? Because uh, somebody's asking if you need a ride. I may need transpo up there, but I'm not a hundred percent sure. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna talk with my wife this evening. I would definitely whoever's writing that on there for the fan page. I would definitely uh, I'll link up with them uh, and answer them. 
Beautiful. I forgot his name. Uh, but you'll see it once you go on Facebook after the show's over. Just, just got to scroll, scroll through the comments. We'll do, definitely. All right, Drake. God bless you. Thank you. I'd love to talk to you all night. I mean, wow. Uh, anything else you want to talk about? Fuck it. If you want to stay on, you're staying on. Um, actually... Any questions? Anything I, you want? You want to get off your chest? Definitely. There's one thing I want to ask you. On the movie The Bronx Tale. Right. I love that movie. Me too. What is your... What is your favorite scene out of there? And then I'll tell you what my favorite scene is. I got a feeling I know what your favorite scene is. You ready? Now Go for you it. now you just can't leave. Yep. How did I know that, that? Is, How did I know that? Because of the the whole motorcycle yep. thing that I do. I'm I'm sure that tipped you off on See it. See that? Yeah, that's my favorite scene when they're in there and he, he's like, Now you're not going nowhere. That is a g <laughs> oh. It was just, oh, uh, yeah, great scene. A lot of great lines. Uh, nothing worse than wasted talent. Um, what's the other one? Uh, nobody cares. Uh, the working man is the tough guy. It's so many good lines in that movie. There really is. It's, um, that's one of the movies that actually kept me, I'm going to share this with you guys too, kept me sane when I was in Iraq. The very first time I went over there. That you watched that movie in Iraq? We had a we had a small portable DVD player. There was me and thirteen other guys in a circle watching this little tiny screen with that movie. Ah, oh, that's a great story. That's another great story. How great is that? What you do in the middle of all this? You're watching a Bronx Tale. That's fucking hilarious. <laughs> hey, I had to. I had to keep myself sane. It reminded me of home. You know. Wow. And, um, I'm originally from Worcester, Mass. That's where I'm from originally. God bless I you. Out, I moved out to Sturbridge a couple of years ago because I wanted to get away from Worcester because a lot of things are going on in Worcester right now. I don't want to say too much just in case. But right. uh, some things are going on out there, and I wanted to give my kids a little bit of a better uh, lifestyle being out in the rural areas and in the, on the outskirts of town to be able to uh, to be able to enjoy things like fishing and hunting and stuff like that. You're a guy. You're amazing, man. Gee, how old are your kids? My kid is. Uh, my daughter is seven. My son is four. I have a stepdaughter that is sixteen that lives with her father that comes over every other weekend, and I have a another stepdaughter that will be twelve. She's eleven right now, there. But uh, she'll be twelve coming up here in July. Are you Are you married? You don't mind me asking you these questions, I, do you? I'm just. I'm just trying. No, no problem, Vic. No, nothing bothers me, trust me. Yeah, I'm, I'm married. We've been married, me and my wife now, going on six years. It will be this Halloween, actually. I got to ask you something. I always wanted to ask guys with balls of steel. And hearing the shit you've been through, you ever have like an argument with your wife and you step back and tell her, sweetheart, are you fucking kidding me? After what I've been through? You ever like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Does she ever break it's, it's, like break your it's, balls it's and you know like it's, 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 after it's hearing your funny you ask that that Vic because I've done that before my me and my wife had a conversation before and, and and it was it was going south this is the best way to put it and I just kind of looked at her and I was like are you fucking kidding me right and she's like my wife got mad she's like what do you mean are you kidding me. Remember that there? He's talking about that. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I've actually done that. And uh, other things like before when I was in the grocery stores before, there was, there was a lady. I had a service dog at one point. And this lady, I'm going to share this. We're in Market Basket out in Oxford. What's, this what's, lady, hold on, what's, what's Market Basket? It's like a home goods? It's a, it's a food place to be able to buy, like, you know, uh, groceries and stuff. Okay. And, uh. We were down there, me and my wife, and I had my service dog, Tess, at the time before before things happened with Tess. She got sick and stuff. But uh, we were in the, in the market basket one time. It was me and my wife, and my daughter was just born. We went down there to go get some formula and some other stuff for the day. This lady in a shopping cart 
runs my service dog over. And I'm looking at her, I'm like, what the hell? Did she hurt the dog? So then, Did she hurt the dog? She didn't hurt she didn't hurt the dog, thank God. But what kind of dog? A German I'm Shepherd? Thinking, what do you got? A German Shepherd? Uh, it was a yellow lab that I had. Oh, they're beautiful. Yeah, and her her name was Tess. That was my dog. But um, when we were in there, I went down another aisle. Lo and behold, the lady runs over my dog again. So my wife is looking at me. I just turn around and I'm looking and I'm gauging my eyes with the lady and I go. This is the line I say, quote unquote. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> I'm like, how how do you not see a yellow lab on my left side as I'm walking down the thing? She goes, I don't care about your service dog. You shouldn't have animals in the store. And oh. I'm like, ma'am, <laughs> this dog, Drake, this dog is here. Drake, to, if to I was there, if I was store. Drake, if I was there, I would have held her down for you. All all I could do. Vic at that point was kind of laugh and kind of like shrug it off. But I'm sitting there going, how how the hell are you going to tell me I can't have my service dog Fucking people in the suck, market man. basket and then the dog is keeping me calm and I don't like to be in here to begin with. Holy shit. You didn't even get the urge just to spit in her face? No, I didn't want to. I didn't want to do any retaliation or anything because I didn't want to draw draw public attention to me, and I didn't want to get any any in any trouble with the law enforcement would be after me or anything. I just tried to keep my cool. Just, just amazing. That could, crazy, be, that, be, that, that could be. That could be. That could be. That could be. Society, Vic. You ain't kidding, and the world has gone mad. That's why I'm here. I'm like a rest area. For just a little relief for a few minutes. You know, I don't have the solutions, but Jesus Christ, I'm just trying to add some levity. It, people are insane. Oh, yeah. Hey, you know, you know what got me this past winter, by the way? I'm going to share this. I was watching your, your melting bread um, video parody that you did, and I'm watching the tree branch on the side of you. <laughs> All I saw was the tree branch smack you right in the face, and you were just like, ah. Oh. I could tell you were like, damn, that <laughs> damn tree. <laughs> yeah, oh, you noticed that, huh? I was hurting. Oh, yes, I did. I was hurting. Listen to me, I'm get, I got hurt. If what you've been through, I'm telling you I got hurt by a tree. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. Uh, it was funny. We watched it. I showed my uncle that video. He goes, man, that guy is funny. And that's how I got my uncle watching your videos and stuff. And I brought him back to some of the older stuff, like Tony Gaga and some of the older stuff. Nice. And, uh, wow. And uh, today I actually shared the, the baby parody that you did. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, wow. I'll tell you how, Drake, I'm going to tell you how sick this world is. That that's an old one. Every every now and then I repost old one because I get newcomers each and every day. So the first time I posted that, you know, you saw how, how I was I was acting like a baby. Some idiot yep. thought I was making fun of people with Parkinson's. This is this is where we're at now in this country. I mean, are you fucking kidding me? First of all, the title is Let's Feed Baby Victor. People I'm telling you, it's a sick world out there. It, it really is. It is. But you, I, I agree with you with that 100%. People, I, I don't understand it now. Don't don't take me wrong when I say this, but our our whole lifestyle when I was when I was growing up in the 80s and 90s, we used to go outside, ride bicycles, we go hang out. Yeah. When that light was on at nighttime on the street, like yep. your ass better be home because your dad was gonna whoop it if you weren't home. See, I'm older and than nowadays, you. I'm older than you. I'm 57. I go back to the late 60s and the whole 70s, and it was like that right. too. It was like that also. It's just, it's yeah, just. Now, I don't know. I don't now, know what's going nowadays on. Nowadays, it drives me crazy because I'll drive down the road. And I'm looking at people's yards, not not scoping them out to be weird or anything, but I'm looking around. And I hardly see any kids outside playing anymore. Yep. When's the last time you saw two kids having a catch? Probably, very honestly, maybe 1997, Amazing, isn't it? Amazing. I don't know, man. That's why, you know, and it's guys like you that, that 
made us able to do all this, you know. And I, I you know, I, 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 every Memorial Day, I, I post that famous picture of, of D-Day when the guys are still in the, those boats before the door opens up. And I title yep. it, I title it Balls of Steel. You know, I, I was never in the military. Nobody in my family was in the military. I can't even watch the opening scene of Saving Private Ryan. I mean, it's just amazing. You guys that movie, are a whole that different... That movie is very deep. You guys, I would shit in my pants if I had to do what you did for an hour out where you were. I wouldn't have diarrhea going down my leg. <laughs> Unbelievable. I That's, man. Hey, speaking about, speaking about D-Day, I'm going to share this with you. Um, the reason why I truly joined the military was because of my opa, my grandfather. Because of your who? He had the no, no. biggest... Drake, Drake, hold it. ...my grandfather. No, before grandfather. What's that word you use for grandfather? I never heard that before. Opa. Opa, what is that? Is that Greek? That is. It's, it's Greek for grandfather. So you're Greek? Negative. Uh, I'm not at all. Oh. I, just, I know some... I know how to speak a little bit of Greek. I like I, that. I learned some different Opa. languages when I was traveling. Opa. And what, what is the grandmother? Opa. Opo? Shouldn't it be the reverse? Oma. Oh. Oma. There you go. Yep. But uh, no, what, what, what drew me to, to join the military and do what I had done was my grandfather. My grandfather was, a, it was in the military. Um, he actually was stationed out of Fort Devens, Massachusetts. He's with the 33rd Field Artillery. My grandfather was one out of six people, out of 60 people in his platoon that actually stormed Omaha on D-Day and made it out alive. So hold it, he, so he was in one of those boats that opened up and he ran onto the beach? He was one of those guys? Yes, he was. Holy shit. I had to do a lot of research to find out, but... I had found out from doing research and my uncle doing a lot of research as well. I have my grandfather's records here um, at the house. He was in four out of five of the major conflicts. How old was he when he was going on back how, in World War II? How long did he live? He, was, he, he lived to be 87 years old. He passed in 2001. Well, actually, hold on here. I got, let me see. That was the, that was the greatest yeah. generation. He, he passed, actually, November 6, 2002. That's when he passed, because I had to take R&R. Uh, &R. I was actually training to be a mortician at the time up at the uh, medical examiner's office in Richmond, Virginia. So I came home. I did his flag, his flag burial. Wow. Mm. But he was, 80, he was 87 years old as he passed. He was in his 40s. No, wait a minute. He was in his 30s. What when he hit Back when the conflicts were going on? In Normandy, he was thirty. He was in his thirties. He was born nineteen fifteen, so it puts him around. He went. He, he was in there at nineteen forty. I think he joined, and he got out in forty five. He was in for five years, so he was thirty, and he got out at the age of, I believe, thirty five. I think. Wow. Well, here's to your grand. What's his name? His name was Albert Benson. Albert Benson? Benson. Here's to Albert Benson. God bless you and thank you for your service. Wow. Can I do a little something for your grandfather? Go ahead, Vic. This is for him. Albert Benson, God bless you. Thank you for your service. 
Sorry, I was a little rusty on that. Oh, no worries. It sounded fine to me. Beautiful. Well, listen, Drake, we will uh, continue. You are an amazing man, an amazing story. Wow. Wow. I will hook you up. We will be in touch for August 17th, okay, in New Hampshire. Definitely. I'm looking forward to it. I'm All right, Drake. To, uh, definitely meeting you. you just touch base with me, like, you know, every couple of weeks before then. So uh, I'll tell you where exactly to get the tickets. Okay. All right, Drake. Thank you, sir. God bless you, and thank you for your service. Hey, thank you, and have a great evening. Take care, Drake. Take care. Bye-bye. Wow. A mortician in the army. Woo. All right. Got to forge your head, right? We got to forge your head. The game is tied 1-1. One, one. We're going to call... Well, that was definitely one of the longest calls, and it was a damn good call. Holy shit. Amazing. He's got to write a book. Got to write the book. Who are you going to call? Oh, excuse me. I got to... We got to change gears here. Let's change gears. What do you think, folks? We we'll change gears? Yeah, let's change gears. Here we go. You know where I'm going with this. You know what I'm, where I'm going. Come on. Who are you kidding? Who are you guys kidding? Can't fool me. Can't fool me, you duty heads. I'm afraid there's no denying I'm just a dandelion A fate I don't deserve <laughs> I'm sure I could show my prowess Be a lion, not a mouse If I only had the noise <laughs> Oh, I can tell you why The ocean meets the sky <laughs> What makes Drake the man he is? Courage. What makes our military men serve our country? Courage. I'm afraid there's no denying. I'm just a dandelion. A fate I don't deserve. I'm sure I could show my prowess, be a lion, not a mouse, if I only had the knife. <laughs> what did you have to say that for? <laughs> there you go. That's how you change gears. You see, folks, there's good and bad in life. There's happy and sad. We all have that choice. Don't be a miserable. Be nice. It comes back to you. You know it does. And if I'm boring you or you think I'm stupid or not funny, well, fuck you too. All right. Well, there you have it, folks. We have to end on a happy note, on a high note. This was a great call, a great night. I don't feel like calling anybody else, so there. This is my show. If you don't like it, I Jimmy Crap Corn and I don't care. <coughs> so we'll be back tomorrow night. You're gonna like the way I'm back tomorrow night. We're gonna be back tomorrow night, and tomorrow night I'll let you know about the following night. <coughs> 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 <coughs>
Wow! I just tasted lasagna I had seven years ago. <laughs> snip, step there, step, step there, and a couple of tra la la. Ha ha ha! Ho ho ho! In the merry old land of ours. Not no way, not no how! And to you, Tin Man, you clinking, clanking collection of collisionous junk! <laughs> Anyway, folks, woo! Drake, if you're still watching, we love you, Drake. We'll be back tomorrow night, same bat channel, same bat time, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's 30 seconds with Vic. Have a great night, everybody. Now. It's time to say good night. Good night. Sleep time. Now the sun turns out his light. Good night. Sleep time. Dream, sweet dream. For me, dreams, sweet dreams for you. Close your eyes, and I'll close mine. Good night, sleep time. Now the moon begins to shine. Good night, sleep time, dreams, sweet dreams for me, dreams, sweet dreams for you. Close your eyes and I'll close mine. Good night, sleep time. Now the sun turns out his light. Good night, sleep time. Dreams, sweet dreams for me. Dreams, sweet dreams for you. Good night, everybody. Good night, Drake. God bless you, sir. See you guys tomorrow night. Best is yet to come. Hang in there.